Hi, welcome to my fifth video in this series about mutations and, today, and disease and today we're going to look at some genetic pedigree diagrams. So on a genetic pedigree diagram you can see um, how different characteristics are passed from each generation to the next and so um, what you have here is a, is a family tree and essentially the oldest people at the top and then their offspring um, on lines joined directly to them um, and so in this case George and Arlene the parents of Tom, Sam, Wilma and Anne um, Anne's spouse is Michael and Sandra um, is Tom's spouse. Um, obviously Sandra isn't a blood relative um, to George and Eileen as, is, as isn't Michael. Um, and so if we use this example um, with albinism and we refer to people in purple being sufferers. And so in this instance if you're a sufferer and you've got albinism um, you therefore need both recessive alleles in order to have it. And so an example of that would be Eileen. Um, who has the genotype small a small a and also um, Tom who has the genotype small a small a. Now on the genetic pedigree diagrams you can look at people's offspring and you can figure out um, their specific genotype so an interesting one here to find out might be George. Now George um, obviously if you look at it um, married to Arlene and has Tom, Sam, Wilma and Anna's kids and so to figure out what George's genotype is, you have to look at his offspring. Now, if Arlene has it and she has small a, small a, George must pass one of his alleles um, to his offspring um, because he's produced kids that have got the condition, so he must be a carrier. So therefore, George's genotype must be heterozygous big A, small a. So another individual that we might quite want to find out what their genotype is is Sandra. Um, and so... Sandra has, we actually can't tell what her genotype is, um, so she could be heterozygous or she could be homozygous um, healthy in this instance. And the reason why you can't tell is if you look at her two kids, so Daniel um, and Alan, if you look at those two individuals, um, they don't have the disease. And therefore, um, we can't tell whether those individuals are um, heterozygous, for instance. And so we can't tell what Sandra is. So Sandra could be either big A, small A, or um, big A, big A. We know that she can't be a sufferer um, because she hasn't got the condition. Um, and so telling exactly what her genotype is is difficult. The only way that you could confirm whether she's heterozygous is if she had a, if she had a child that suffered from the disease. Now if we change this scenario somewhat um, and alter it so that now the allele was dominant for the disease. So let's change the disease completely and assume that it's caused by a dominant allele um, and we could see what difference that makes to our genetic pedigree diagram. Um, and so in this case, if, if the allele is dominant, we could look at Arlene again and we know that Arlene must be, in this instance, big A, small a. And the reason we can tell that is if we look at her offspring, She's not only produced um, offspring that have the condition, so Wilma and Tom, but she's also had offspring that don't have the condition. And so if she only had the dominant allele which causes the disease, all of her offspring um, would therefore have it. And so we can tell that Arlene is heterozygous in this instance because of the presence of Sam um, and of Anne. Now a really interesting individual to look on on this family tree would be um, Carla. Now, if we look at Carla, um, we therefore have to look at um, what both Anne um, and Michael's genotype is. And so, if we look at these two, obviously Carla has the condition. And so if it's caused by a dominant allele, she must have received one of those alleles from um, one of her parents. And so we can look here and we can see that both Anne and Michael don't have the condition. So we can tell what Anne and Michael's genotype is. So in this instance, um, they both must have small a, small a, so they must be homozygous um, just with a healthy allele. Now, obviously, this can't be the case because they've produced a child that has the condition. So this tells us, unfortunately, in this instance, that Anne must have been cheating. Because otherwise, there's no way they could produce Carla. She must have, she must have procreated with an individual who had... Um, the condition and therefore passed on to um, her child. 